In this video, I will be showing you how to identify and manage safety critical components for medical devices. At the end of the video, there will be a link to a free template that you can use as a guide for your identification of critical components in your design. Hi, I am Klaus Rømer. I am an expert on the 6061 standard at Medical Device HQ, and I'm a member of the Technical Committee 62 that authors these standards. This video comes from my online course, Introduction to Safety for Electrical Medical Devices and IEC 60601, that is available on medicaldevicehq.com slash 60601. If you don't want to miss out or on more premium content from our online courses, subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button and click the notification button. Not only will you be kept up to date with what videos we publish, but you are also helping us reach out to more people that work with medical devices. I hope you will enjoy this video. Let's get started. In this video, I will introduce you to critical components. Just like the insulation diagram, this is a term that is not found in the standard. It is used in the test report form to identify components that are safety related as required by clause 48 of the standard. It is a very important topic because either you will have to demonstrate that each critical component is safe or provide evidence that it complies with a relevant component standard. While there is no formal definition of critical components, the text of IC 60601-1 provides an informal definition, which is all components, including wiring, the failure of which could result in a hazardous situation. So once again, you shall apply your risk management process to identify which components are critical components. Here are a few typical examples of critical components. A failure in any of these components can potentially result in a hazardous situation. A fault in the insulation barriers provided by power supplies and power cords can expose the user to electric shock. A fuse that fails as a short circuit does not limit the current to the device. A fault in a wire capacitor or a line filter can present line voltage on the chassis. A fault in isolating components such as transformers, opto-isolators and solid insulation can expose the user to electric shock. A fault in thermal protectors can expose the user to heat, a battery can cause fire or even explode, and connectors can fail to provide insulation. Also, identify materials that are inside or part of a fire enclosure. Examples include the plastic enclosure, printed circuit boards, connectors, insulated cables, and components with plastic parts such as insulators, fans, bobbins, relay housings, fuse holders, sleeving, and so on. In short, all plastics should be identified as critical components. The requirements for critical components are that they shall be used within their specified ratings, they shall be reliable in the conditions of use in the device, and they shall comply with applicable requirements of either a relevant component standard or IC 60601-1. To check compliance with the requirements, you shall assess data sheets and drawings from the manufacturer. The test certificates or test reports and that the component is consi consistently identified across all documentation. Here is an example illustrating what you should check. This is part of a data sheet for a series of fuses with different ratings. Let us assume that the ratings of one amp component in the series is suitable for your design. Here, the data sheet indicates that you will have tested and certified the component in the range 0.25 to 10 amps. I recommend that you always confirm this indication in the data sheet. 
never trust a datasheet or the website of a component manufacturer. The way to verify that the one amp fuse in this example really has been certified by UL is to look it up in the online database. The key to do this is in the UL file number, typically starting with the letter E and then a five digit number code. So go online and look it up. If you get a match and the information you look up is in UL's database matches the data for your one amp fuse, then you're good to go. So please make sure to check the company information and the available information for the component to make sure that the specific component you want to use is covered by this online certificate. And also that the ratings as well as any limitations from the certificate matches your use of the component in your design. As this in documentation is online material and very relevant to your design, you should make sure you create your own local copy. And you should manage this document in accordance with the requirements of ISO 13445 clause 424F for documents of external origin. This is a major pitfall, so be careful. If you can provide a valid test certificate, you do not have to retest the component to ensure that a fault cannot result in a hazardous situation. If you cannot provide a certificate, you should consider a replacement or asking the component manufacturer to perform and certify component testing. Which is why you should compile and maintain this documentation during development. You can save a lot of time, effort and money by using components that have been tested and certified by UL, VDE or similar certification bodies. For each critical component, you shall identify the part number, manufacturer, type number and technical data in order to uniquely identify the component. You shall also identify which standards the component compl comply with and the reference number for the certificate of conformity or test report. Remember to check that the standard is suitable for the component and that a valid edition has been applied. Also, always check the certificates of conformity for every critical component and any limitations indicated on the certificates. Notably, you should compile the documentation throughout design and development. But to explain the approach the test house will apply, it will probably look something like this. Critical components are identified by examination of the circuit diagrams, then their type and manufacturer is identified in the parts list or bill of materials. Then they assess data sheets and drawings to check that each component is used within specified ratings and the reliability of the conditions for use of the device. Last but not least, they check the certificate and any limitations for the specific type of component. So it can be a very good idea to check these things yourself before design freeze. I hope this video will help you identify and manage critical components in a meaningful way. If approached in a timely manner, it does not have to be that complicated. But again, the devil is in the detail, so be thorough and pay attention. There's a template that you can download for free on medicalvicehq.com that highlights what areas you should be worrying about when you identify critical components in your design. Before you get to the link, I would be so happy if you subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button. If you want to learn more about safety critical components for medical devices, I welcome you to register for my online course, Introduction to Safety for Electrical Medical Devices and IEC 60601 through medicaldevicehq.com, where I will take you through the many requirements and teach you how to work efficiently with safety according to the requirements of the IEC 60601 standards. Use the link to get the template for, from medicaldevicehq.com. Do you have any questions related to critical components that I can help you with? Let me know in the comments field. 
Thanks for watching.